there was a lawyer who, to disconcert Jesus, stood up and said to him, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What's written in the law? What do you read there? He replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. You have answered right, said Jesus. Do this, and life is yours. But the man was anxious to justify himself and said to Jesus, And who is my neighbour? Jesus replied, A man was once on his way down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of brigands. They took all he had, beat him, and then made off, leaving him half dead. Now a priest happened to be travelling down the same road. But when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite who came to the place saw him and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan traveller who came upon him was moved with compassion when he saw him. He went up and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. Then he lifted them onto his own mount, carried him to the inn and looked after him. Next day, he took out two denarii and handed them to the innkeeper. 
Look after him, he said, and on my way back, I will make good any extra expense you have. Which of these three do you think proved himself a neighbor to the man who fell into the brigand's hands? The one who took pity on him, he replied. Jesus said to him, Go and do the same yourself. I've been isolating the past week or so. I tested positive for COVID. And I've really been touched by the number of people who've got in touch and asked if I'm okay, how I'm doing, whether I needed anything, making all sorts of offers to provide food parcels or nip to the shops for me to get anything I needed. I'm frequently touched by the kindness of people. Not just kindness shown to me, but shown to others too. But occasionally, just a very few times, I've been completely overwhelmed by the kindness of others. When I was in Zimbabwe, the first free weekend that I had, Julian, a teacher also working with VSO, and I decided we were going to try and meet up with some of the others who'd gone out to Zimbabwe with us. We tried to catch a bus, or a couple of buses, but we got lost. We missed the bus that we were hoping to get, didn't understand the names of the places on the front. We ended up, late at night, being dropped off in the middle of nowhere. There's a whole story about the walk that we tried to make and the animal sounds around us that scared us. But we ended up running. We saw a light in a distance eventually and ran towards it. When we got there, it turned out to be quite a posh hotel with nice lodges, African lodges, dotted around extensive grounds. We couldn't afford to stay anywhere like that. We'd been planning on camping, staying in an old deserted bus. But we couldn't carry on, not at night, not in the dark. We went to reception to ask if there was anything they could do to help us out. But they weren't sure. The staff were wonderful. They, they were so polite and caring. It was above their pay grade to do anything. They kept saying, Oh, the night manager will be here soon. You can ask him. He used to be a nice man. The, the past term, past tense, worried me a bit. He used to be. Do you mean he's not now? When the night manager did arrive, he was a nice man. He was quite stern and asked a lot of questions about how we came to be there and how much money we had and how long we'd been traveling. But eventually he decided that he could help. We couldn't camp in the grounds of the hotel. It just wouldn't be done. And we couldn't go back outside because there were wild animals out there. So instead, he showed us to one of the most luxurious chalets in the hotel. Gave it to us, left us with the key. Before he left, he asked if we'd had anything to eat. We hadn't, not since breakfast. A little while after he left, one of the other staff in the hotel held up with a, a tray full of food and a couple of beers for us to drink. I think we were so touched that we didn't even sleep on the beds in the room. We slept on the floor in the sleeping bags we'd been carrying. The only thing he asked of us was that we left by the back gate early in the morning before the day manager turned up and found out what he'd done. We did. We got up early, made sure the room was spotless so that no one knew we, we, we had been there. We went through the back gate, which went onto some hills. 
and as we were making our way down the hills, we bumped into the night manager. He was out for a run. And once again, we thanked him profusely for all his help, his kindness, his generosity. But he wouldn't hear of it. In fact, he thanked us for the opportunity of extending help to someone who was in need. With that, he went his own way. And we continued down the hill, only to be attacked by a troop of baboons. But that's a different story. You know, I can't even remember the man's name, but I'll never forget his example and his kindness. He did what he could for two people who were in need, and he did it without any thought, any hope of reward. He showed what kindness he could, just because he could. I doubt very much if it was his first act of kindness. Pretty sure it takes a fair bit of practice to get to that level of selfless love for a stranger. But that's what the parable of the Good Samaritan encourages. A desire to reach out to those in need, no matter who they are. To make the most of the opportunities we are given to show love to others. No matter how small or how great their need may be to do what we can, and to do it in love.